The Cash Cups are back. Weekly solo events that you can participate in for a chance of winning some moolah. Man, that's enticing. There's the Solo Contenders Cash Cup on Thursdays again, and the newly added platform Cash Cups on Wednesday. With the new platform cups, all you console and mobile players out there now have a much better chance of competing for the prize pool. Give yourself a pat on the back. What's going on, guys? It's the Motivation Guy. That's right, the one and only Keith Allen. Listen, I want you to continue being an inspiration to everyone that you come in contact with, all right? Spread that love. Spread that positivity. If you're down about things in your life, hey, make someone else smile. It's going to help you in the long run, all right? Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you because I'm posting up vids to inspire you to not only be great in this game, but also in life. You got this. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing advice and tips that are going to help you pop off in these weekly cash cups. Tournaments like these cups are a completely different beast when compared to the matches most of us typically play. Your games are limited, the opponents get tougher as you progress, and everyone is playing to win. But if you go in unprepared and not knowing what to do, your chances of success are very slim. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuys.com where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuys and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, Night. You have to check out ProGuys.com and be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support because we really appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab my favorite candy. Come on, scream it out loud. That bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. All right, so the first piece of advice that we're going to give is very important. You know, with how crucial it is, we just can't ignore this topic. And that advice is to warm up. Everybody say warm up. Warming up is like crazy important, especially if you're playing in solos. You know, a lot of 1v1 fights tend to boil down to individual mechanics. The winner is usually the one that messes up the least in edits, builds, and shots. By warming up on a match day, you can help ensure you're in the tip-top condition when it matters the most. And if you don't, well, you might as well kiss your chances of winning anything but goodbye. Bye, Felicia. We suggest giving yourself at least a couple of hours before the tournament start time, but more doesn't hurt either. Spend that time in creative grinding the build techniques you're going to be relying on, right? Like tunneling, wall replacing, side jumps, and even high ground retakes. The specific techniques you practice don't really matter too much. What's more key is getting your hands and mind used to the mechanics. Also, focus on the skills you think you're lacking, right? If your edit game feels weak, running through an edit course once or twice can help a ton. If it's your aim, okay, we'll exercise that in the combine or in an aiming course. If you spend too much time practicing the things you're already good at, I mean, like, what is that going to do? <laughs> you're just missing out on valuable training that you could be getting. After your time in creative, you should definitely play a few arena games to finish your warm-up. Arena matches are the closest things to these cups, all right, as they play out in a very similar fashion. It's the best overall practice you can get on match day. Practice getting into fights when you have the advantage and playing for end games when you don't. You're going to be playing for placements a lot during your matches, so it's so important to get that mindset while you practice. You should always be thinking about things like where the safest rotation path is, where the high ground's at, whether you can take it, as well as the timing of your rotations. Overall, my friends, warming up plays a major role when it comes to consistent and quality results. I mean, there's a reason why NBA players shoot hoops on the court before every single game, and it's pretty much proven to help with performance. If you go in cold without warming up, your results is going to be worse than what's possible. And it just might be that thing that keeps you from winning. Pretty much everyone who earns money in these cups gets a majority of their points from placements. Some even get as high as 70% of their points purely from the placement milestones. Sure, you know, they get a decent amount of the limp points too, but a lot of those kills, guys, are gotten at the end of the match. Essentially, what we're saying is that playing for the end game is vital. In most of our matches, going for early and mid-game kills won't be a priority. Reaching the top 25, top 15, and top 5 players remaining earns you the equivalent of 2-3 to three kills per milestone. Win a match, and there's another 3, which really adds up when you think about it. These points are what you should typically be prioritizing. Sometimes it can't be worth it to take a fight. It's totally up to you, though. You gotta assess the situation and see if you have an advantage going into the battle. Situations like third-partying a fight or getting amazing loot right from the start can give you a massive edge when it comes to scooping up kills. But the circumstances have to align. You know, most of the time, though, when you've got to rotate and you don't have that starting advantage, you're better off playing for placements. In these matches, you could think of the beginning and mid games as preparation. Spend that time focusing on things like finding more loot, gathering materials, and rotating to center zone when you need to. All those things are going to help you make more end games. You guys want to know the best ways to make it to the end game? Come on, you want to know? For real? 
Okay. Rotate early. Stay in an advantageous position and don't take mid-game fights. The problem with mid-game fights is that A, they usually take too long to finish, all right? And B, there's a crazy third-party potential. Sure, there might be a third-party situation where you can get like an easy kill, but even with that, there's risk involved. Because the bad circle RNG and a lack of mobility this season, you're usually better off avoiding mid-game fights altogether. When you do make it to the end game, all right, prioritize your positioning. Good positioning has probably the biggest impact when it comes to finding end game limbs. By staying close to or inside the safe zone, not only are you more likely to stay alive, but you're also able to look for kills on late rotators. Since there are no mobility items, just make sure to rotate as soon as possible so you can get set up. With how the format works, there are times when you can fight early, die, and not have it negatively affect your points. The format for these cash cuts is 10 matches across three hours. So if most of your games go well and you've made it to multiple end games, you'll have one or two matches where you can just hot drop and go for kills. Even if you don't get a kill and die, it doesn't matter since you're trying to finish your 10 games by the three hour mark. So if you wanna play around this format and try to maximize your points, we suggest playing your first five games passively for placements, all right? Then based on how those games went, you can hot drop a game or two. Assuming you do hot in your first few games, you're gonna be set up to play a couple of aggressive ones, all right? But if your first games don't go well, remember, play the remainder as they matter. No hot dropping or aggression. Remember you need those end game points, okay? The early game is no doubt the hardest part of these cash cups, my goodness. During the first eight minutes of each match, players drop like flies. The biggest reason for that is that all the contesting that happens off spawn. It's almost downright impossible to avoid enemy players at your landing spot, but you can lower the chances of enemies being there by choosing somewhere like really low key. Somewhere maybe like unnamed on the map with only a bit of loot, doesn't matter, right? That way it won't attract the whole server. You're gonna be able to get a decent kit full mats, and focus on just making the end game. Okay, so our favorite tool for analyzing the map is lootlake.info. It's an interactive website that allows you to quickly see all the spawn locations around the map. Things like chests, motorboats, and upgrade benches, just to name a few. So if you're looking for a new landing spot, we recommend first checking lootlake.info before trying it out in game. You might be surprised at just how good some of these lesser known spots really are. But aside from landing in highly populated areas, another reason why so many players die quickly is that they try to land in spots they don't even know. Almost like they pick at random or something. It's almost like they jump off the bus blindfolded. <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's why for these events, it's crucial to know your landing and know it well. You know, Benji Fishy got second place in the recent Platform Cup, and he landed at Lazy Lake in almost all of his games. If you watch Benji and his squad, you know that they've been landing at Lazy since day one. So that spot is near and dear to his heart. He knows how to get low landings, the best places for loot, and how to approach fights in the area. While Lazy Lake is pretty populated, Benji is one of the best box fighters and just overall players in the world, which is why he's able to land there, take fights, and just come out on top, regardless of the number of players. So really, man, you know, you should be trying to familiarize yourself with a single landing spot, okay? Something preferably low-key to help you make more in games, and it may take a few weeks of practice before you finally, like, really get in tune with it. But once you are, oh my goodness, you're gonna find yourself getting past the early game much more often. With the format and strategy behind playing in these cups, knowing a second spot for occasional hot drops is also useful, okay? Spots that attract players like Sweaty Sands, Steamy Stacks, or Pleasant Park. Whenever you're running out of time and you still got games on the board, really knowing how to land, loot, and fight at one of these spots can be the advantage you need to pick up kills and get some extra points. Our last piece of advice, all right, for when you're playing in these cups or any other tournaments is to stay cool, man. You gotta stay cool. I say this to my Insta all the time. You know, I know we get those feelings of frustration. I get it. Where we just want to smash our controls after a tilting moment. I get it. I got a graveyard of just controllers. All right, I got tombstones that just say rest in peace controller because I've, I've been through them all. Trust me, it's sad. It happens to the best of us, especially when you're playing solos. There's no way. But during these events, nothing is just worth getting so upset over where it just messes everything up. You need to realize the past is the past. You cannot change the past. You've died, the match is over, and now you need to focus on your next game. You know, with the rest of the tourney ahead, you can't let a bad game affect your performance. Bad matches are almost inevitable during these events. They're gonna happen. So you just gotta be prepared to just brush them off and just stay composed. 
Anytime you're fuming after an annoying loss, try to recognize that anger isn't going to help. The faster you can realize that and just move past your bad moments, the easier it's going to be for getting back to performing like how you know you can do it. To help move past those bits of anger, try swapping your focus to what needs to be accomplished, all right? Readjust your thoughts. Like say to yourself, okay, next game, I need to rotate earlier, or I need to position better. Then once you load in, focus on what's happening at the moment, like where to jump out on the battle bus, the players in your area getting loot, where the zone is, you know, and so forth. Eventually, you're gonna forget about what made you angry in the first place. You see this trait with pro players all the time, like FaZe Dubs, for example. He'll lose a game and he'll get ticked off, but he drops it quickly. Since it's only gonna hinder his performance, he knows not to let it get to him. But not everyone has the mental fortitude needed to stop feeling angry on a whim. I get it. I mean, I was like that for such a long time. It takes time, but try to practice it. So another thing that you can do if you're feeling tilted is take a short break and just cool down. Even though time is limited during these cash cups, you know, queuing immediately into the next game while you're mad can have its consequences. You won't be thinking clearly and you're gonna be making a ton of mistakes left and right. We've all been there. So it's often better to take like a five minute break, you know, to just get up, walk around, get a beverage, you know, maybe eat some bunch of crunch, <laughs> maybe talk to somebody and then come back and queue up for another next match, all right? After the cup is over, complain all you want, <laughs> go for it. But for the duration of the event, playing while you're angry can lead to a downward spiral of like disastrous results. Winning money, playing a game that you enjoy is something most of us can just dream of. Though with these cash cups, the chances are pretty real, man. I'm sure a lot of you guys have the skills needed to win, but you're just new to the whole tournament thing. Always warm up before each event so you can develop muscle memory and play at peak performance. Play for end games in a majority of your matches as placement points are vital to be a top performer. Choose one or two landing spots to really familiarize yourself so you don't mess up your early games. And always remember, stay calm, cool, collected. Playing while tilted is not gonna help you. So take breaks if needed and always try to focus on exactly what you need to do in game. All right, guys, hope this video made your day. Once again, it's the motivation guy. That's right, your friend, Keith Allen. Connect with me on my Instagram. I'm posting up vids to inspire you to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. I believe in you. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to use code PROGUYS when you make any sort of purchases. You know, it just really helps us out, and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking the video. Subscribe to the channel and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.